What do bond prices, shorting stocks and bonds, and Amazon employees getting fired over emails have in common? You're going to find out. Live from the three-room apartment over Uncle Jack's garage while the basement's being rehabbed and moved. Welcome to Money in the Morning. Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe Salci. Hi, Average Joe Money on Twitter. And on today's show, we have not one, but two headlines ripped from the financial press. And we'll not only read portions of those like they do on some other shows, but we'll also go above and beyond and talk about what these headlines mean for your money. And then, as if that's not enough, we'll put the two of them together and say, what do these two have in common? And we call that our big idea. Money in the Morning is brought to you this week by our three-town tour, Kansas City. If you're listening to this on Tuesday, we're coming here tonight. So we're at the Kansas City Improv out by the airport. Fantastic venue. When I went out and looked at it, just a great place. We're going to have a great time. We got Joel Goldberg, who does the uh, pre- and post-game shows with the Kansas City Royals. We have, uh, he'll be interviewing the president of the uh, Negro League Museum. Uh, we also have Tracy Phobes, the penny pinching mom, talking about how to score deals and attractions around Kansas City. We got Zach Pettit talking about FinTech and KC. It's going to be a great celebration of all things money and KC. That's tonight at the Improv. Doors open at 6.30 and uh, show starts at 7.30. So I hope we see you there. It's only 10 bucks. How great is that? Two shows for 10 bucks. But we got one show and it's absolutely free and it's starting right now. So let's get moving. Here are today's Money in the Morning headlines. Ready, set, Go. Yeah, we do these in front of a live. Uh, thanks, Laura, by the way. Uh, we do these in front of a live Facebook audience. If you want to be in that audience, head to facebook.com forward slash iStackBenjamins and sign up for that page and you'll get alerts when we go live. And I know it would be fantastic to have you here. We're waiting for you. But Nadia is here and she said she's going to see us there. Nadia can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. We had our run through with the whole team in Kansas City. And I got to tell you, it's going to be a fun show. But we got a fun show right now that starts off with a headline from financialplanning.com. And I know it's a place where all of you guys hang out, all of us money nerds, maybe not. Uh, but us uh, financial planners and people that used to be financial planners do. This is written, by the way, by Sarah uh, Ponzak and Vildana Hajrick. ETFs exchange-traded funds that short treasury bonds rise with yields. ETFs that short treasury bonds rise with yields. We're going to talk through this one. Soaring interest rates of investors buzzing around ETFs that bet against U.S. government debt. A pair of pro shares that short Treasury bonds that mature in 20 years or more posted their best performance in almost two years Wednesday as yields on 10-year notes jumped to a seven-year peak and 30-year treasuries rose to the highest level since 2014. TBF, which moves inversely to the ICE U.S. Treasury 20-plus year bond index, increased 1.8%, while TBT, which captures twice the inverse performance of that index, surged 3.6%. So those are the ticker symbols, by the way, if you want to check these out. TBF, ticker symbol for the first one, moves inversely to whatever treasuries do. And then uh, TBT goes twice that inverse performance. The piece goes on. Traders took notice. Roughly 1.8 million shares of TBF worth 42 million traded hands Wednesday, about four times the daily average over the past year. TBT, the ultra short fund, was even more popular as nearly six and a half million shares worth 256 million change hands, more than double the daily average over the past year. Quote, people are a little freaked out, said Eric Balkanos, an ETF analyst at Bloomberg Intelligence. If you see activity in these, it shows there's a lot of people who are looking to bet on rates moving quickly. Investors flock to the ultra short bond ETF once again Thursday as few are willing to bet against persistent rising rates given the strong economic growth in the U.S. and a Federal Reserve set to continue tightening about 4.3 million shares worth of the 175 million in change hands compared with about 2.5 million shares typically 
traded each day. Balkanos warned that investors should be careful with TBT, saying, quote, if rates shoot up, this is going to be in jackpot mode, but it can return and lose a lot quickly. Todd Rosenbluth, director of ETF research at CFRA, added that some investors could be using these risky products as a way to hedge. Quote, investors have gravitated more to short and ultra short term focused ETFs to protect against rather than bet against rising rates, he said. Interesting story. People betting on interest rates rising. Of course, do we think that rates are going to rise? Yes, we do. We think interest rates are going to continue to rise. But does that mean that you buy exchange traded funds that short treasuries? I think first thing we have to do for people that are new to this game is talk about what it means to short a stock. So when you when you buy a stock, you buy it long or you buy a bond. They call that buying it long. And that means that you're going to hold it. And if you think, you know, this isn't probably what they meant when they said this originally when they created this. But if you think long term, I'm going to buy and hold long term, that's buying it long. So when you hear buying it, buying it long, that means that you buy it, you own it, it's yours. But if you short something, that means that you don't own it. You are, well... Let's go through the mechanic here in a second. But what it means is you're going to make money when the value drops. Here's the way it works. And it's a little complicated, so hold hold on. We're going to start off with just a basic whatever stock. You take shares that you don't own, borrow them from somebody else, and sell them. And then when the person you borrow them from says that they want those shares back, or you decide to give them back, you rebuy the shares and you hand them off. So there's two instruments going. Number one is I'm selling shares I don't own. That piece means I'm borrowing the shares. And by the way, I get paid then right away for those shares. I get paid based on the price today. When I give them back to the person that I borrowed them from, I want to give them back less so I get to hold on to some of that money. That's what, and I don't know if that made your head explode. Every time I explain shorting a stock, it kind of makes my head explode, as do options. Um, and either one of them, really, once you know how they work, are that hard. But getting your head around that concept, a little difficult. So what this means for treasuries is that we're going to borrow money. We're going, we're going to buy treasuries and sell them immediately to somebody else. And hope like hell, interest rates keep going up quickly, which means treasury shares are going to drop in value. And then I will make money off that. And as you saw in the last week, 1.8% for the one that just is inverse and, and 3.6% for the one that's double. It's a lot of cash for holding stuff for one week. I mean, we're talking about what? I magnified money over on Stacky Benjamins. These uh, interest rates on a savings account, you know, 2.5%. There's one that we see that does 2.5%. Has Beam opened yet? I don't know if 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 uh, the really high interest rate one Beam has opened. I know they have a waiting list. We had them on the show, but I haven't seen if they've opened. But if Beam's open, they might be higher. But besides that, two and a half percent is the highest you can find on a site like Magnified Money. So one point eight percent in a week, or three point eight six percent, makes you kind of want to do it, doesn't it? And yet, it's ugly. And whenever I see people play this game, they get burned. It is absolutely not a game for beginners. It's not the type of thing that you want to uh, get involved in. It really takes investing and becomes betting. I am betting on these market conditions to continue. And then what's funny is, if you remember the lead up to, two th to 2008 when the market dropped the first time, well, not the first time, you know what I mean. When the market dropped last time, let's put it that way, dropped the first time, right? As if the 1920s didn't exist or, or 2000 didn't exist. But last time the market dropped, bonds kind of acted funky. I mean, there have been plenty of times when you think that bond prices should be acting differently than they do, and they don't. So unless you're somebody who's in there every day and understand bond investing, st stay away from these shorts. Just, just do not, don't do this. Don't, don't do this. I'm not your mom, but I wouldn't do it. That's our first headline. Let's say hi to our friends who are with us uh, hanging out in, uh, on Facebook this morning. As I mentioned earlier, we do these live in front of a Facebook audience. Uh, Jeremy's here. He said, no basements in Florida, but you should come here. Jeremy, we were there last week. We just did our live show in Orlando. It was amazing. We cried the whole time that you weren't there, but uh, we were just there. 
Uh, Eric says, I like shorter term bonds right now, but shorting treasuries might require crystal ball and mines crack. Eric, I am with you, brother. I, I do not, um, I, do, I don't understand it. I don't get it. And our friend Jason here, the Wealth Hound, is here. We're recording this uh, just before a Spartan game, and he and I have about an hour and 20 minutes to get this done so that we can watch uh, Sparty kick uh, Northwestern's butt. So we got some work to do, man. And uh, Than says, Elon Musk friends must have been shorting Tesla. Yeah. You see, speaking of shorting, uh, Elon Musk in a tweet this weekend said something. He called the SEC the uh, short sellers... Um, Short, so it was something about how the Securities and Exchange Commission helps short sellers. A lot of people short Tesla, especially when you lose 51. Wasn't that our headline? 51 people in a in in a year, uh, 51 top people in a year that they lost. That's a that's a lot of lot of executives to leave a company in a year. That's our first headline. Let's move on to number two, guys. Second one comes to us from the Wall Street Journal, and uh, I don't know if you've seen this yet. But do you see this piece on Amazon firing employees or an employee for sharing customer emails? That's the headlines from the tech section. Laura Stevens wrote this. Listen to this. Amazon.com on Friday notified some customers their email addresses were shared with an outside seller on its platform in violation of the company's policy. Amazon said it had identified and fired the employee responsible for sharing the information. No other customer information was disclosed, and the seller who received it was blocked from selling on Amazon, the company said. Quote, the individual responsible for this incident has been terminated from their position, and we're supporting law law enforcement in their prosecution, an Amazon spokeswoman said in a statement. Wall Street Journal reported last month that some employees inside Amazon had been bribed to provide third-party sellers on its marketplace with internal information, including email addresses. Amazon said at the time that it was investigating those claims that would punish anyone who violated its policies. It wasn't immediately clear whether the dismissal disclosed Friday resulted from the same investigations. Independent merchants now make up a huge share of its sales on Amazon.com, helping drive its dominance in online retail by broadening its selection and increasing price competition. Those sales also tend to be more profitable for Amazon because it takes a cut of the purchase price without having to take on inventory risk. More than 2 million merchants now sell an estimated 550 million products on Amazon, contributing an estimated $200 billion in gross merchandise volume last year, according to FactSet estimates. But as more merchants have joined, Amazon's grappled with an increase in bad behavior on its website, including problems with fake reviews and counterfeits. Customer email addresses are valuable because they can help a seller reach out to someone who's left a bad review and ask them to change it. Verified reviews figure prominently into whether a product surfaces when a customer searches. Amazon has repeatedly said it has zero tolerance for bad behavior on its site. While it polices bad behavior, many sellers and former employees describe it as whack-a-mole situation. Peace uh, continues from there. Uh, but that's... that's um, that's that's interesting. There's a few things on here I want to talk about before we get into the firing. Amazon makes more money on reselling other people's stuff because they don't have inventory risk. And inventory risk is how are we going to store this stuff? And if somebody doesn't buy it, what are we going to do with it? As an example, leading up to our tour, we bought a bunch of our T-shirts from Brad, the awesome dude who makes our shirts. Usually we just have Brad ship those things. Now I have a bunch of shirts, and if we don't get rid of all those shirts, now I have to store them. And if I'm buying that storage, and I have to store it for three or four months, that is loss of profit. So companies try to do this thing called just-in-time inventory. Try to have it come in and very quickly get rid of it. Look at planes when you go to the airport. Go into the airport in the morning. Plane unloads, they quickly clean it. They're fueling it at the same time. Their goal is to have that baby turned around in 30 to 40 minutes and back out the door. Why? They don't make any money sitting in the airport. It's the same exact thing with inventory. So for you, if you're somebody thinking about business, first thing I'd ask you is, what's your inventory system? Is there a way? Maybe it's, maybe it's a better idea. But then the second thing is, somebody else doing the work and you're making some money off of it. And I'm not saying that uh, that that doing nothing is a phenomenal place to be. But, but I will say this, if, if somebody else is making the product anyway and they can drop ship it and you can introduce them to the, to the buyer 
why it just sounds like a great business model, doesn't it? No inventory risk. So small business owners, pay attention to those types of stories. Case studies on how great businesses work are a phenomenal way to learn about doing better business. But let's get into this thing about the firing now. So I'm somebody that has a good job and I get to work with third-party resellers and they bribe me, they ask me, and I don't know what the bribe entails, but they ask me to divulge customer uh, uh, the customer's information. And I don't know what happened here, but if I'm a betting man, I'll bet it was around the review. I bet it was around a review or somebody posting something and, and trying to get the person to change it, as it says in this article. I think if I'm the Amazon employee, I need to be thinking more big picture. Sure, there's money right now, but look at all the things that could go wrong. And not only are they losing their job, which was the way they were able to get the bribe in the first place, they're, they're talking about the police being involved. And now all of a sudden you're a criminal as, as, as well. It's funny because I think a lot of time we think about the short term and obvious, and we don't think about that long term and not so obvious, right? We think about the leaf, but we don't think about the entire forest. And th this would have been a good time for this employee to just step back. Uh, and Than in the Facebook group says, people do anything for a buck. And I totally get that. But look at how many bucks you make if you keep your job versus what's going on, what's going on here. I always get a little sad when I see people thinking so short term about their job. I think we'll leave that one there. Hey, let's uh, let's take just a second to tell you what's going to go on in uh, Kansas City and also turn our attention to Detroit with our big tour that's happening. If you're listening to this on Tuesday, happening tonight, uh, doors open at 6.30, 7.30. Uh, Joel Goldberg is going to have his Rounding the Bases podcast. Great podcast where he talks about business. Joel Goldberg, for those of you who are in the area, uh, you may know already that Joel does the pregame and postgame shows for the Kansas City Royals. He has a cool business podcast. He's going to be uh, interviewing the, uh, the president of the Negro League Baseball Museum, which is going to be a fantastic show to open it up. And then on our show, Tracy Phobes will be there, the Penny Pension mom. Can't wait to have her there. We're also going to talk to Joe Goldberg on our show. He asked people a bunch of questions about their business. We're going to ask him the same thing, same questions that he asks people on his show. We're going to ask him. And then there's a big fintech conference in town. MBKC Bank is putting that on, and we're going to uh, interview him uh, about all these cool new apps coming to your phone, coming to your computer. How's managing money going to get easier? I love talking about the future. Like we just got back from Epcot and we went in that big ball, planet Earth, and they talk about the future at the end. And I just think that's amazing. All this cool stuff coming to us. You're going to see it Tuesday in, in uh, Kansas City. And then, but wait, there's more. TIAA is with us. And uh, we're excited to have them as a sponsor. But they're celebrating 100 years in business by giving away a million dollars to these people that are difference makers in their community. And we're going to be focusing on one difference maker there. We're going to interview her about what they do. This particular group works with kids. I'll just tell you that. It's going to be a great show. So, uh, and of course, Chris Costello from Bloom. Uh, Lacey Langford will be there. Uh, voiceover artist Carrie Olson is going to be with us. Um, it's funny, we got a voiceover artist and we have Doug. Don't know how we're going to fight that out. Lots of fun here in Kansas City, Tuesday night. Ten bucks is all it cost at the Improv. In Detroit, two weeks from now, show starts at 7 p.m. Doors open at 6. That's in Ferndale, Michigan. I know Eric's here with us and he's going to be there. Can't wait to say hi to, uh, to, to friends of the show. It's always fun to go out and uh, know that somebody actually listens to stuff. It's so fun. All right. Let's finish the, up this puppy with what we call the big idea. And the big idea is where we take these two pieces and we say, what do these have in common? Because short selling ETFs that look at treasuries, our takeaway, yeah, don't get involved in that. A lot of people doing it right now. Do not do it. The second piece from the Wall Street Journal, Amazon fires an employee for sharing customer emails. Number one, look at how Amazon does business. If you own a business and do case work on these different businesses. But then second, and I love this, think a little longer term about your job. Not worth going to jail for to make a buck. I think the big takeaway here is this. 
you know, we start playing games. Than said in the uh, Facebook comments, people will do anything to make a buck. Don't play games with your career or with your investments. It's funny, when I meet people that want to play games with their investments, I met a guy that wanted to, you know, buy and sell and buy and sell. And he was like, well, I think we could get 10% per month. Yeah, maybe. But then we get to betting. And he's watching Kramer every day. And even Kramer says in, his, in, in the, the, the pre-roll to his show uh, on CNBC, he even says, don't, don't trade based on what, what we're doing. And yet, tons of people do. You can see Kramer has this huge effect on the market. He says something on his show, and then all of a sudden, you'll see a stock go crazy in either direction. Immediately, like, like within seconds, it's, it's done. By the time you have time to place your trade, the money's already been made. But the point is, is even getting involved in those games means there's games then upon games. Like if you're playing games with your career, you got to remember who you lied to or who you told a story to or who's mad at you because you did something that you shouldn't have done. And so now you got to tell this person something. Don't play any of that. If you start with your ethics and your goal and you're the same person all the time and you're straightforward, isn't it easier? And also, isn't it more fun? I mean, it's way more fun. And I know that we don't exist to have other people like us. You know, there's that joke from the movie Wall Street, if you want a friend, buy a dog. But, 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 but I still think it's a lot more, I don't know, life is a lot more interesting that way. And I think I'll, I think I'll leave you with that. Don't play career investment games. It makes life a lot simpler. Thanks for hanging out, everybody, on Facebook. Thanks for everybody listening to this show. We'll see you again here next time. Go stack some Benjamins. Bye-bye. And that right there is when you know the show's live, right there. That was just a reminder that we are not editing this and we're doing it live. See you next time. Money in the Morning is created by Joe Saul Cihai and comes to your ears because of the collective genius of our producer, Richie Rutter reese engineer, Caden Thompson, and a pack of very well-trained ferrets here in the basement. You'll find links to all of our headlines featured on today's show in Joe's Twitter feed at at Average Joe Money. I know you already know this too, but Money in the Morning is for entertainment purposes only. and You shouldn't act on anything recommended by a bunch of entertainers in a basement without first consulting with your financial advisor and second, having your head examined. Have a headline you'd like us to discuss? Send them to Joe at StackingBenjamins.com or put them on our Stacking Benjamins Basement closed Facebook group. This show is copyright 2018, Stacking Benjamins, LLC, all rights reserved. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and I reserve the right to always say, we'll see you next time back here on Money in the Morning.